Hey there, you're watching Go on Shaw TV, the fitness edition. Coming up on today's show, we visit Port Alberni's newest and smallest farmer's market and hear the roar of thunder. Don't go away, we've got a great show for you. Well, hello there. You are watching Go On Shaw TV. It is the fitness edition because we are here at the Bob Daly Fitness Park. Now, if you walk the track here, if you do any events at Glenwood Centre, you've seen this lovely little park with all sorts of new equipment. Teresa Kingston, where did all this come from? Well, it came through uh, funding from the Alberni Valley Track Club and the city, putting it in to augment what we have here at the track and to create a free opportunity for people to come out and use the, the fitness park. Okay, to me, this is so exciting because there's this wonderful, attractive, inviting equipment. I see people using it all the time. Nomi Sampson, as a fitness trainer, are there right and wrong ways to use this equipment? Yes, there is. Does it concern you a little bit or do you, are you just glad people are out here using it? Um, concerns me a little bit to make sure that they don't get injured, but yes, I'd like them to, to learn how to do it properly. Now, if you've been out on the equipment at all, you know there are labels on all of these pieces of equipment. Um, do they give pretty good instructions if people follow them? Um, I'd say no, um, because people might not know how to use their body properly, so it's good to learn how to, it's amazing how, as you'll see, and when we show you how a one inch little move can make all the difference. It can absolutely make all the difference. And you know, we're gonna be telling you a little bit more. We're gonna get Nomi to give some, we got some nice young guys here that are gonna hop on the equipment, get some instruction from Nomi in just a minute. But before we do that, man oh man, this has been such a summer of events in the Alberni Valley. We had the regatta, we had the Jane Austen Festival, we had Thunder in the Valley. We also had a soapbox derby. On a scale of one to 10, I say 10. As you can see, these kids are pumped. And it looks like their parents are pretty excited too. I'm sure she's a little nervous. I mean, she's only seven, but uh, I think she's gonna have a good time. Don't worry too much, don't steer too hard, and just give her. <laughs> and in this case, that's some really useful fatherly advice. into almost about everything. Not even one hay bale. This is Alberni's newest racing event, the Little Lightning in the Valley Soapbox Derby. A little bit of excitement, a little bit of fear. The fear is, you know, pretty evident when you're just about to launch them. They're looking at you and they're knuckling their wheel pretty hard. You know, it's, uh, it's just kind of fun. And, and then you get to the bottom of the course and they're all smiles, they're all grins. They're just having a great time. Yeah. The Alberni Kinsman Club decided to revive the once popular soapbox derby and literally send kids flying down Argyle Hill. In a safe manner, of course. Uh, it's great to see this um, rejuvenation of uh, soapbox derby in Port Alberni. Great activity for, uh, for the youth of our community and uh, for the parents to get involved with their kids. I mean, just look at the happy faces. It's what it's all about. You know what? And it's making memories for these kids. They'll remember this day for a long, long time. Cart after cart, race after race. It really was a day of making memories. When I'm going down the, the ramp, the steering wheels are really twitchy. It's pr kind of easy and hard at the same time. The first try, I was wiggling all over. The second try, um, we went. I went straight. One, go! An adrenaline rush. I was pretty scared at first, but after the race, it was fun. I would do. I would do it again. It looks like this soapbox derby has become an overwhelming success. In fact. Organizers, parents, and participants are already looking forward to next year. For Go on Shaw TV, I'm Jenny Fortune.
Thunder in the Valley is an August tradition in Port Alberni, a quarter mile drag race event that takes over the regional airport for the weekend. But when that venue became unavailable this year, organizers met with the city and made a bold decision to move the races into town, shutting down Stamp Avenue and turning it into a racetrack. The logistics were formidable. Safety, parking, staging, spectator areas, and basically making everything fit in a smaller footprint. But when race day came, everything seemed ready. Everything was taken care of, except the weather. Blue skies this morning when we were having our meeting, and then uh, shortly after that it started to sprinkle again, and you know, we can't argue with Mother Nature. Um, I don't think she likes me right now, so. They couldn't argue, and they couldn't race until the track was dry. We're uh, dragging it right now with the uh, with the tire dragger, which heats it up real good and dries it out. And we've got a bunch of cars you see going around in a circle down at the end. That's the uh, the the drive off lane when they're finished, because if they're out of control when they come to the end, we don't want them spinning around and things like that. The efforts paid off, and by 11 o'clock, drivers were lining up in the staging area to begin time trials. And from then on, Thunder in the Valley Street Legal Edition went off pretty much without a hitch. It's great, great people, lots of energy here, lots of volunteers. It's a lot of work behind the scenes people don't see. It's good people. It, they've, they've really gone out of the way. Can't believe what they've done here. Very well organized. Well, one thing I don't think a lot of people are aware of, the safety crew they have here is phenomenal. Yeah, baby, that's fire smoke. Bill Raskowski and the Island Nitro guys, get your hands. Tower side, the Heatherington Industries Lane. Ryan the club behind the wheel of the Regal. it almost went off without a hitch. Well, the rain did return at about 2.30 on Sunday, cutting the final run short. But by then, every driver had a pretty big grin on their face, and the organizers were already planning Thunder 2017. For Go on Shaw TV, I'm Nancy Wilmot. Holy cow, Thunder in the Valley was so much fun. That eighth of a mile track had the adrenaline going all weekend. It was just a blast. I know the drivers and the organizers were very pleased with it. And we were too. We were out there with our cameras all weekend long. So keep watching your guide. There'll be a half hour special coming up. You're not going to want to miss it. Now, we are still here at the Bob Bailey Fitness Park with Nomi Sampson. Nomi, what are these two guys doing? We've got Jordan and Nathan um, doing something here. So this is... Uh piece of equipment to stretch multiple muscles. This particular one, they're gonna try to stretch their quads. So maybe just by the picture, this is what it might look like. So what they should be doing is standing up nice and tall, softly bending the knee that they're standing on and then pressing their pelvis forward. Do you guys feel the difference there? Yes, yes. Yes, nice lengthening in the front of the leg. How long can you hold it, guys? You got five seconds. Yeah. So they should at least be holding anyone's stretches from at least more than 30 seconds. Can to really lengthen the muscle. 30 seconds. I'll change my answer. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is just one of the pieces of equipment here. There's quite a few. And I'm guessing on all of them, there are, are little tips like that that people should know. Yes. Yeah. Now, Nomi is going to have a few more tips for you in just a few minutes. But before we do that, Miranda Fatour is going to introduce you to Port Alberni's newest little market. Marie No loves farmers markets and she has sold at them for years, but her latest venture was a little bit different. She decided to set up her stand all alone on an empty lot owned by her good friend Keith Ambrose. It looked a little lonely so I convinced her that it would be better if she was going to market there regardless to have a few other vendors with her and that's kind of how the idea was born. The idea is a small private market situated on a small lot between commercial buildings. We're trying to convince people who would never normally stop on 2nd Avenue mm -hmm. to stop here. It's a, it's a little bit of an odd location, it's a small venue, but once the people come and see what's there, I think they all go away happy. I think, I think that's what's happening and it is taking off. 
and the small space has created a close-knit group of vendors who support each other's successes. Number one, we all we all work really well together, um, so it's not it's not people sitting there competing with one another. We're kind of like a team. Um, we're lucky enough to have some really good vendors, some good quality items. That we're a small, tiny venue, but we've managed to pick up some very good vendors and squeeze a lot into a little space. And that's just what the urban market has to offer. Space for connecting vendors and customers through their love of organic produce, baked goods, and much more. That's kind of what the market is for, is to put the local producers, whether it be a backyard of 10 by 10 square feet, or some lady's kitchen where she she makes, you know, baked goods and whatnot, that's what we're trying to put in front of the public. As for Marie, she's fallen in love. It was just the quirky change that she's been looking for. We know we're small. We know that we're in a strange location when it comes to Port Alberni. And we know we're doing things a little different, so it takes time for people to catch on. For Go on Shaw TV at Port Alberni's newest farmer's market, I'm yes, Brandon Tudor. Yes, yes. <laughs>
and come down. So don't let your knee go past your, your foot. So you're just gonna bend both your back knee as well on your back toe and bend your back knee. You're straightening it, there. And then come right up and bring your knee up into a balancing pose. And then maybe take your hands off and see how well you can balance. <laughs> come on, Jordan, you can do it. <laughs> Good, and we'll just show another one. So you're just gonna face um, this way and put your left leg back on. And then take your right leg over and over behind. So over and over. And you can do this fast, oh, wow. you can do it slow. And this is really gonna strengthen and burn out his quads. So people that are sports specific, hockey, anything, there's lots of fun things that you can do on here and get creative. I can't believe it. This and is even feel, maybe just stand and balance and hold your hands out. <laughs> the another option. And then hold your hands out and just work on Come your on, balance. You so balance it. is so important. <laughs> all the stabilizers working all the way up. There Great, thank you, Jordan. Lots of options. Lots of options. Feel the burn, Jordan. I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> Nomi, thank you so much. You can see even just a simple piece of equipment like this, there are so many options. We're going to tell you in just a few minutes how you can learn how to use this equipment because you're going to want to come out and make use of, use of this. It's a real asset to the community. But before we do that, we are down here in Sports Central in Port Alberni. We're going to take you to a sports camp that has been running in this Alberni Valley for, oh, I don't know, over a decade. You won't believe how many meals they serve. Making salad, preparing fresh fruit, stirring soup. It's all pretty standard stuff in a commercial kitchen. But this kitchen is part of Port Alberni's West Coast Hockey Prep Camp. And the number of meals that are served here is pretty astounding. 2,600 meals is what I figured out. Okay, but that's 2,600 meals a day, every day for the duration of the four-week camp, which means that head cook Patsy Wangler will have actually served 72,800 meals by the end of this international training camp. We are here from 5 in the morning and we go till 10 o'clock at night and it's we're always prepping the next meal ahead and at, in the night time we're working for the next day's meals. So yeah, we're busy. Busy is an understatement. This year's camp saw enrollment swell to 860 young athletes and they all have pretty healthy appetites. These kids are bulking up. They are doing um, two ice times or ice time in a dry land and there's yoga and developmental stuff that they're doing on the side, having meetings and um, they eat a tremendous amount of food. A tremendous amount of food. <laughs> and if you think these are all local athletes, think again. These are high school, college, even Olympic level hockey players who travel from all over the world to attend this camp. The facility here in Port Alberni is what really makes this special and makes us be able to manage uh, this camp. The facilities, the ice surfaces, the athletic halls turned into dormitories, and of course, the kitchen. And with the hundreds of athletes and coaches converging on this small city, there has to be a substantial economic impact. All my groceries are bought locally. Um, from a local supplier here in town, I get deliveries twice a day thousands and thousands of dollars, like the size of a small house is the grocery bill around here. And that's not even counting the hotels and B&Bs that are booked for the families who stay in town for the duration of the camp, a branch of sports tourism that isn't fully appreciated by those who sometimes aren't even aware the annual camp is underway. You can come to Port Alberni and, and have an impact on the local economy. It's something that we take very, very seriously. And, and if people don't know we're here, it's maybe that we're, we're not bothering them. But we're very proud of the, the number of families that are coming to town and supporting the community the same way that the community supports us. Millions of dollars in economic spin-off and hundreds of young athletes receiving top-notch individualized coaching. But as Nate will tell you, there's one part of the West Coast Hockey Prep Camp they all remember. You know, we have NHL coaches and, and college coaches and junior coaches here. Normally the kids go home talking about the food. Yes, the food at the West Coast Hockey Prep Camp is pretty good. But don't ask Patsy or her staff to comment on it. They're too busy washing up the last of the 73,000 dirty dishes. For Go on Shaw TV, I'm Nancy Wilmot.
Hello again. Today we're going to be learning more about the letter K. There are four Ks that we'll be learning about today. The first one is just a plain K, K and Kakatwin is the first word for K. The second K you're going to hear today is the popping K or K. And the word for that is Kithlanus, which is a fur seal. Kithlanus. The third one is uh, the rounded KW, qu, and the word for that is Kwisat. And Kwisat is a stranger. The fourth one you're going to hear today is the rounded glottalized KW, and it says Kwa. And the word for that is Kwis. Hopefully, we won't be seeing too much of that now. Kwis. We'll see you all next time. Well, that does bring us to the end of another go on Shaw TV, the fitness edition. Nomi, thank you so much for giving us a little bit of instruction. And Teresa, we know people want more instruction. When and where are they going to be able to get that? We're putting together a brochure that will have pictures of the right and wrong way to do these activities, and that should be done in a couple of weeks, available at ECHO. We're also going to schedule some free try-it sessions where Nomi will be here to help you. And again, we'll be advertising those on Shaw and at ECHO Centre. And as well, we're going to produce some YouTube clips to go online on our, our uh, Facebook page that will show each of the stations. Those are all in the works and plan to get that out there soon all great free ways to get fit this summer going into the fall. Thank you ladies so much for telling us about it. Until we meet again, be good to each other.